I want to talk about a particular problem that my wife's bike has been having. This is a V-Star 650. This particular V-Star is still carbureted. It's got dual carburetors in it. They're Makunis. And on this bike, there is a problem where with ethanol fuel, which is definitely not a help, when it sits for any amount of time, um, there are jets that become easily plugged. And what it does is it causes a particular issue. We're going to get this bike going right now. We're just going to turn it on. We're going to pull out the choke like that. is not on the warm-up. The problem is, is throughout the entire cycle, but it's easier to demonstrate it once at least the engine warms up. It's been about 30 seconds. I've already come off the choke one notch. And you can see the idle's still high. This is normal as the choke is on the idle tire. We all know this, right? And I'm going to come off idle. Right now, it can still come off idle relatively smoothly in comparison to what's going to happen if I start relaxing the choke. I'm going to choke again. Another notch. You see the idle has dropped slightly. And we can just start to hear the stumble just off of idle. Just start to hear it. Choking on the last setting, uh, effectively shutting off the choke. See, we've come to idle, and I'm gonna I'm gonna roll off of, of idle now. And right there, it stumbles, it dies. And turn it on again. Idle's just fine, right? Just coming off idle, and it dies. This is a known issue. It has to do with a particular jet being plugged up. Now, I'm always an advocate of when there is an issue with these carburetors, I'm all about tearing off the tank, ripping out the carbs, and rebuilding them. I do this for the 1100s too religiously. I do it for this bike religiously as well as part of a scheduled maintenance. However, due to ethanol gasoline and this particular bike and, and the size of these jets, leaving it sit just for a little while causes these particular holes to get gummed up so easily it's, it's just not always possible to, to rip out the carburetors every single time. There's an easy way to get under here and solve this issue to get this bike going. Just because these jets are, are plugged up doesn't mean that the whole entire carburetor is dirty. So I make an exception with this bike. As luck would have it, we find this portion of the carburetor highly accessible. We see the left side gas tank right here. As I look down, we can see the float bowls of the carbs here and the solenoids and this is where we're going to be working very carefully it's going to be a lot easier if you're going to be able to lift this tank up just to give you more room to work under here uh tank lifting is not difficult on this bike it's a simple process this nut on the seat here is 14 millimeter the back seat removed exposes this bracket with these two bolts. This is five millimeter hex. This whole two piece bracket and the seat lifts out though this metal bracket is separate. At this point, most importantly, we make sure that the tank is switched to the um, off position. At least in which direction that is. Off position. Then we'll go and remove this retainer clip from the end of this hose here, just like that so that we can remove this hose from the tank, which may put up a fight until it breaks free. Now that it's free, there, there's something to think about here, uh, and this is a matter of preference. It depends on how much gasoline you have in the tank. If you have a lot of gas in this tank and you do not feel comfortable removing this tank from the bike with a full tank of gas, which may be the case, you could attach a hose to here and attach the other side of that hose to an empty gas tank or, or put it in an empty gas tank and then switch this over to reserve and remove the top gas cap at the tank 
and then let it drain, you know? So that's a possibility. To think about is if you have, you know, crappy gas in here that caused the carbs to foul, you probably want this gas out anyway and, and mixed with 20 gallons that's sitting in a car, it's probably perfectly okay to dump into your car and drive with. Uh, if your car's got pretty much a, a full tank of gas, it would be absolutely harmless. But not something you'd want to keep in the motorcycle. That's something to think about too. This might be an opportunity to uh, get rid of that gasoline that's in here, put some fresh gas in after you do this job. Food for thought. I've been talking about it so much, I even convinced myself. So I got the cap open. I got a line going from the, uh, the petcock over here down to an empty tank. And now I just turn it to reserve. And we can hear it going. Now we wait a good long time. Important to go to reserve, right? Because if you just go to uh, on, you're not going to drain the entire tank. And monitor that fuel can. It's not going to auto stop once it fills up. When, when that thing starts getting heavy, it may be time to uh, shut off the valve, go and dump this in the car, and then uh, reconnect it and start that valve again. Or else it's just going to dump all over the floor, make a mess, and smell real nasty. With the tank drained, I shut the petcock off, ready to continue. These retaining bolts right here at the base of the tank are 12 millimeter. Note that the one on this side also holds the bracket for the choke. We're also going to have to remove this uh, speedometer and console plate to expose the wires as well as the mechanical speedometer cable. This is going to take a 4 millimeter hex. Having removed these three bolts, I'm going to need to uh, pull up some slack on this particular cable as I raise this unit. Sometimes I could actually, as I, as I pull up and straighten the handlebars a bit, with one hand, slightly difficult, I'll admit, but yet I can do it with one hand. Pull up slightly on the speedometer cable. I should be able to unseat this. Oh, there I go. If I can do it with one hand, you can do it with two. Unseat this and pull this unit up and get under there and unscrew the cable. Your camera doesn't do it justice. You hold it sideways. There's really a lot more room to work in here than the previous uh, picture demonstrated. You can see I'm just unscrewing it like that. It'll come right off by these uh, last two connectors. And without the uh, speedometer and uh, console here is removed, uh, the only thing to take note of is I like to uh, get this started by pushing these through as much as possible when I lift the tank. So none of these get caught. So I just get it down there. I can push the speedo cable back just like that. I don't want I don't want anything to get caught. Incidentally, the tank is gonna lift up from here and then slide forward and up. Not really a big deal, but I, I don't want it hanging out as far as possible either. So at this point, we've got the fuel removed. We've got the two rear retaining bolts removed, one that holds the um, choke and one that does not. We've got our uh, speedometer console cluster removed and all the associated hardware. Now I'll assume if you had any common sense, the tank was drained. So now we're gonna lift the tank from the rear and pull back. See, it just, just lifts just like that, just lifts up. No worries at all. It's got two rubber notches on the front that hold it in place. It's hard to see while it's still connected. It's gonna be easier to actually show this mechanism once the tank is out rather than show it while it's in. And you go, oh, oh yeah, that's how it works up front. So I already started lifting it up in the back and, and just walking it back and forth as I pull it towards the rear. And you can already see the, the rubber mount in front that holds the tank in. Right? So it was, it was just lifted up in the back and then walked back and forth like this, slowly moving towards the rear to pull the tank out of those front brackets. And this part's really crucial. It's called have a place to put your tank before you proceed. Don't, don't put it on the ground. Don't put it on concrete. Find a place, a table with a towel, and have it ready when you lift off this tank to put it somewhere safe. Paint jobs on gas tanks are extremely expensive. And there you go. The tank is removed from the bike. The bike is now ready to do all the work that we need to do on it. There's nothing else that we need to remove other than the particular things we're moving from the carb as part of this service. And just to show you those tracks that are in the tank, this is what holds it in. And this is why the tank needs to be walked back. Those rubber little uh, uh, round discs in the front of the frame hold the front of the tank into position. They get walked back. The tank slowly moves back and out of those tracks. And then the front is unseated. The back already being unseated, the tank lifts straight up. 